So, far away Nisha, thoughts on Wolverine? It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Pretty badass. Yeah, played by a huge jacked man called Hugh Jackman. <laughs> I love that joke. I'm not apologising for it. Wolverine is a Marvel anti-hero with a hyper-accelerated healing factor, retractable bone claws, and an indestructible metal skeleton. The latter of which you'd assume would be a largely positive impact on Wolverine's life, because hey, indestructible skeleton, yo. However, Wolverine has expressed on numerous occasions that his indestructible metal skeleton is more of a hindrance than a help a lot of the time, especially at airports. Remember when they were a thing? Remember when you could just go to an airport? Remember when you could just leave your house? I know, yeah. Oh, God. Weird, isn't it? Also, I just noticed from the way this camera's... I've got my hand in my pocket, but it's like I've got my hand on my... I'm going to hold my hands above this now. I remember when, like, people used to walk around like that. Just, like, hand... Just on the todge. Just a handful of the todge. Anyway, Wolverine. <laughs> uh, something... <laughs> Fucking... <laughs> Wolverine, for people who don't know... Oh, God, I can't stop laughing now. Fucking hell, man. <laughs> just, just, I just need to just exude the todge out of my body and just bring in the Wolverine. Okay, right, Tunch. so... Stop saying Todd. I know it's funny, but you need to stop saying it because I'm trying to do my line. So for people who may not know too much about Wolverine, um, the adamantium coating on his skeleton is not part of his power set and it's something that was forcibly added to his body against his will. And contrary to what you'd expect given that the covering is completely indestructible, Wolverine is actually more dangerous without an indestructible skeleton than he is with it. How can it be more dangerous when he's not indestructible? Well, in the Marvel Universe, adamantium is noted as being virulently, virulently toxic. And as a result, Wolverine's own healing factor has to constantly battle with it, in effect, weakening how useful it is for Wolverine. So that's kind of similar to Deadpool, isn't it? Yeah, where in the film, it's like, I thought you said this treatment would cure my cancer. Yeah, we can't cure cancer, but this healing factor will kill it as quickly as it's killing you. And it's like, but I look like a testicle. It's like, and that is a tough choice, isn't it? It's like, do you want to die? Or do you want to look like a testicle and live? It's like, I don't know. It's just so, especially as well, if I look like Ryan Reynolds first, I'd be well gutted. And they even have that joke at the end of Deadpool, don't they? Where he staples the picture of Hugh Jackman to his face. Oh. The huge jacked man. <laughs> the huge jacked man. I love that Hugh Jackman just got buffer as those films went on. Because I think there's a great tweet from him where there's a picture of Wolverine in the very first X-Men movie and he looks like, oh, just a dude. And then you see him in The Wolverine and he's just fucking shredded beyond belief. He got more in shape when he was like nearly 50 fucking years old. It's ridiculous. But to bring it back to Wolverine in the comics, his own skeleton is poisoning him, which is ironically really fucking metal. But also kind of gutting for Wolverine, isn't it? It's like that line in the first X-Men film where Rogue asks him, um, does it hurt when your claws come out? And he goes, every single time. When they come out, does it hurt? Every time. Every single time, because they have to, like, you know, just cut through his own flesh, and then his healing factor um, uh, heals yeah. the wound. And I think that's what he talks about in the comics as well. No, I always I always think about the uh, scene in, I think it's Wolverine Origins, where okay. he's staying, staying at that couple's house. <laughs> because the shit CGI claws. <laughs> His claws come out and he, like, he destroys their bathroom. Yeah. You right in there? Yeah, I'm fine. But then you have like the really shit CGI shot of him like clinking them together. It's like, how did this look worse than they looked in like the movies 10 years before it? Uh, but to bring it back to the comics once again, if anyone curious about how powerful Wolverine's healing factor will be without adamantium, in one comic, he has all the adamantium forcibly ripped from his body by Magneto in one of the most one-sided beatdowns in comic history. Because you have got man with metal skeleton versus master of magnetism who controls all metal. And as you might imagine, that fight does not go well, as evidenced by this panel from the comics of Wolverine screaming as all the metal is ripped from his body. And while you'd expect him no longer having an indestructible skeleton to make him weaker, because his healing factor no longer has to combat the adamantium poisoning, uh, it gets supercharged, essentially, and he's able to recover from things like bullet wounds instantaneously. Like, he's shot, and then seconds later, he's fine again. 
And something I've always disliked about the live action movies is how weak they make Wolverine's healing factor look because they want to keep them like PG-13 or whatever the fuck it is. So they never really show you like Wolverine getting that injured. Like you'll have a scratch on his head and then it'll heal or something like that. And then you have the game based on the Wolverine Origins film, where the opening cutscene shows Wolverine just stripping all his own flesh off his hand to escape from handcuffs or something, oh. having them regrow yeah. and then just stab someone. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but that's what you want to see. That's what it'd be like fighting Wolverine. So he does actually have quite a few weird powers, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got like enhanced sensors and they sometimes show them off in the movies like he'll sniff and he'll be able to tell where people are. But the one that they, they do actually show quite well is his Berserker Rage, which where you get like my favourite scene from the live action movies, him just sprinting through the forest at a hundred miles an hour. Uh, but I think the best that's ever looked is in the uh, the X Men anime, where Wolverine is like trapped by like a psychic villain, and he just turns to Beast and says, "Beast, I know this sounds stupid, but I need you to punch me really hard in the face." He's like, "Why?" He says, "Just please punch me as hard as you can in the face." He's like, "Why?" Because I need to lose my shit. <laughs> I need to be angry. <laughs> yeah, he needs to get angry, and it reminds me of that moment in Four Lions. Have you seen that? Oh, yeah, that's the one that's shot in like, Sheffield, isn't it? Shot in Sheffield. That's, the, that's like Sheffield's claims of fame. But and he's having that argument because, yeah, it's like when you're in a fight and then you punch yourself in the face. I'm having a fight with this fictionary man, right. and he's not punching me hard enough in the face to make me go mental and win. <laughs> it's like, it sounds so stupid, that's what Wolverine does. <laughs> I need you to hit me to let me go mental so I can win this fight. So, yeah. Okay, so what's this about his skeleton being really bad? Uh, well, in addition to just fucking killing him, and um, the adamantium skeleton weighs quite a bit. I think it adds a hundred pounds of additional bulk to Wolverine. And it's noted in the comics that virtually everything Wolverine does requires a literal superhuman level of effort because he's carrying around more weight than an ordinary person. And a side effect of that is that all of his blows are enhanced to a degree because he's punching with like a hundred pounds of extra force. Not to mention he's got indestructible knives at the end of his fists. And he talks about how it's difficult for him to do almost anything without injuring himself or somebody else because of the extra weight. <laughs> Just think like if he wants to go high five someone, he might actually break their fucking hand. Well, the worst part about Wolverine's skeleton weighing him down is that he also can't swim, which is really, really bad for him because um, it's noted in the comics again that one of the few ways to truly kill Wolverine is to drown him because his healing factor cannot heal the damage done by um, oxygen deprivation. However, it can, in his own words, prolong the agony. Ooh. So if he sinks underwater, he just drowns, comes back to life and then drowns again until finally his body gives up. Oh, no. And having a hundred pounds of extra bull, like basically wearing metal life preservers does not help him swim. <laughs> Okay, so what's this about airports? Well, one of the weirder things Wolverine has to deal with on a somewhat regular basis is getting stopped and frisked at airports because his metal skeleton sets off uh, with the detectors when he goes through them. And it's, one of those it's really, really funny to me that Wolverine has to deal with this, considering he has access to, like, what is it, the Blackbird? Like the X-Men super jet that can go anywhere, and he starts to fly fucking coach. If people are wondering, well, how does Wolverine deal with this? It's not like he can hide the fact he's got a metal skeleton. He has a card um, that says he's a war veteran with a metal plate in his skull, which I really like because it's technically the truth, because Wolverine is a veteran of near enough every modern war in history, as well as some secret ones. So he does. So he is a war veteran with a metal skeleton, it's just that the card doesn't tell the full story. There's something really funny to me about the idea of like the greatest hero of the X-Men, I would just get like guff off the TSA. I just, I just like had this funny thought of like, you know how with like in Avengers and stuff like that, they mm. have um, extra scenes at the end. Yep. 
And there was that one where they're all sat at that cafe, yeah. eating food in silence. <laughs> I just imagine if they put something at the end of an X-Men film where uh, just Wolverine's going about everyday life and he's trying to go through an airport and he's just having to deal with shit by setting the metal detectors off and he has to keep stripping down. <laughs> and you have got a great idea there, Nisha. I would love to see just like more moments of levity in live action films or even like the TV shows based on superheroes. Like, I want to see superheroes dealing with normal shit. I love that yes. stuff. I want to see how like Wolverine just makes his fucking breakfast with his claws. Yeah. <laughs> How does he wash the pots? Yeah, how does he do it? I, I want to see people using their powers for stupid shit. Just everyday stuff like Wolverine's um, doing his laundry and accidentally rips his clothes. He has to buy new ones. Yeah. I want to just see like, uh, this is a you know, free idea uh, for anyone working at Disney. Make an X-Men series, but just set it in the X-Mansion and never show any battles with supervillains. Just show how people in that world just go about their everyday tasks. Yes. I, I just want to see so that. funny. I just want to see like various heroes dealing with shit. But like, I want to see Professor X like just dealing with like you know spam calls on his phone. <laughs> and, like his phone's ringing, he uses sight, like, he knows it's a spam call, and then someone else picks it. Oh, don't pick it up! Come on! I like Beast, I want like someone yelling at Beast because he's leaving fur on the fucking sofa. It's like, come on, Beast! Oh, that's what all that stuff. So yeah, free idea for Disney right there—a live-action slice of life. TV show about the X-Men. 